This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Uncle Remus by Joel Chandler Harris Chapter 19 The Fate of Mr. Jack Sparrow You'll trample on that bark twill it won't be fitten fur to fling away, let low make hoss collars outen, said Uncle Remus, as the little boy came running into his cabin out of the rain. All over the floor long strips of wahoo bark were spread, and these the old man was weaving into horse collars. I'll sit down, Uncle Remus, said the little boy. Well, then, you better, honey, responded the old man. "'Cause I despises for to have my wahoo trampled on. "'If twas shucks now, it might be different, "'but I'm a-gettin' too old for to be projectin' longer shuck collars.' "'For a few minutes the old man went on with his work, "'but with a solemn air altogether unusual. "'Once or twice he sighed deeply, "'and the sighs ended in a prolonged groan "'that seemed to the little boy to be the result of the most unspeakable mental agony. He knew by experience that he had done something which failed to meet the approval of Uncle Remus, and he tried to remember what it was, so as to frame an excuse, but his memory failed him. He could think of nothing he had done calculated to stir Uncle Remus's grief. He was not exactly seized with remorse, but he was very uneasy. Presently Uncle Remus looked at him in a sad and hopeless way, and asked, "'What dat long rigmarole you been telling Miss Sally about your little brer this morning?' "'Which, Uncle Remus?' asked the little boy, blushing guiltily. "'That just what I's asking of you now. I hear Miss Sally say she's going to stripe his jacket, and then I knowed you been telling on him. Well, Uncle Remus, he was pulling up your onions, and then he went and flung a rock at me," said the child plaintively. "Let me tell you this," said the old man, laying down the section of horse collar he had been plaiting, and looking hard at the little boy. "Let me tell you this: that there ain't no way for to make tattlers and tail bearers turn out good. No, they ain't. I've been mixing up with folks now." Going on eighty year, and I ain't see no tattler come to no good in. Dat I ain't. And if old man Methuselah was livin' clean twill yet, he'd up and tell you the same. Show as you a sittin' there. You remember what come of the bird what went a tattlin' round bout Brer Rabbit? The little boy didn't remember, but he was very anxious to know, and he also wanted to know what kind of a bird it was that so disgraced itself. It was one of these year uppity little Jack Sparrows, I speck, said the old man. They was all as bothering longer other people's business, and he keeps at it down to this day, peckin' year, peckin' dar, scratchin' out yonder. One day, after he'd been fooled by old Brer Terrapin, Brer Rabbit was sitting down in the woods, studying how he was going to get even. He feel mighty lonesome, and he feel mighty bad, Brer Rabbit did. Tain't put down in the tale, but I expect he cussed and rared round considerable. Leastways, he was sitting out there by himself, and there he sought and studied and study, to a by-and-by, he jump out and holler out, "'Well, doggone my cats if I can't gallop round old Brer Fox, and I'm going to do it. I'll show Miss Meadows and the gals that I'm a boss of Brer Fox,' says he. Jack Sparrow up in the tree. He hear Brer Rabbit, he did, and he sing out, "'I'm going to tell Brer Fox, I'm going to tell Brer Fox.' Chicka bitty wind a blowin' acorns fallin', I'm goin' to tell Brer Fox. Uncle Remus accompanied the speech of the bird with a peculiar whistling sound in his throat, 
that was a marvellous invitation of a sparrow's chirp, and the little boy clapped his hands with delight, and insisted on a repetition. This kind of terrified Brer Rabbit, and he scarcely know what he gwine do. But by and by he studied to himself that the man would see Brer Fox first was bound to have the intern, and then he go hopping off towards home. He didn't get fur when who should he meet but Brer Fox, and then Brer Rabbit he open up. What this twixt you and me, Brer Fox? said Brer Rabbit, says he. I hear tell you going to send me to destruction and nab my family and destroy my shanty, says he. Then Brer Fox he get mighty mad. Who been telling you all dis? says he. Brer Rabbit make like he didn't want to tell, but Brer Fox he insist and insist, to at last Brer Rabbit he up and tell Brer Fox that he hear Jack Sparrow say all this. Course, said Brer Rabbit, says he, when Brer Jack Sparrow tell me that I flew up, I did, and I use some language what I mighty glad to want no ladies round no wires, so they could hear me go on, says he. Brer Fox, he sort of gap, he did, and say he speck he better be saunterin' on. But bless your soul, honey, Brer Fox ain't saunter fur, for Jack Sparrow flip down on a persimmon bush by the side of the road and holler out, Brer Fox, oh Brer Fox, Brer Fox. Brer Fox, he just sort of canter along, he did, and make like he don't hear him. Then Jack Sparrow up and sing out again, Brer Fox! Oh, Brer Fox! Hold on, Brer Fox! I got snooze for you! Wait, Brer Fox! It'll astonish you! Brer Fox, he make, he make like he don't see Jack Sparrow, and neither do he hear him. But by and by he lay down by the road and sort of stretch himself like he fixin' for the nap. The tattling Jack Sparrow, he flew long, and kept on calling Brer Fox, but Brer Fox, he ain't saying nothing. Then little Jack Sparrow, he hopped down on the ground and fluttered round amongst the trash. This sort of distract Brer Fox's attention, and look at the tattling bird, and the bird he keep on a calling, I got something for to tell you, Brer Fox. Get on my tail, little Jack Sparrow, said Brer Fox, says he. "'Cause I'm deaf in one ear, and I can't hear out of the udder. Get on my tail, says he. Then the little bird, he up and hop on Brer Fox's tail. Get on my back, little Jack Sparrow, cause I'm deaf in one ear, and I, I can't hear out of the udder. Then the little bird, hop on his back. Hop on my head, little Jack Sparrow, cause I'm deaf in both ears and hop up the little bird. Hop on my tooth, little Jack Sparrow, cause I'm deaf in one ear and I can't hear how to dutter. The tattling little bird, he hop on Brer Fox's tooth, and then... Here Uncle Remus paused, opened wide his mouth, and closed it again in a way that told the whole story. Did the fox eat the bird all, all up? asked the little boy. Jedge Barr come along next day, replied Uncle Remus, and he find some fetters, and from dat word went round that old man squinch out and caught another what's his name. End of chapter. <laughs>